Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top five reasons why the Fuji X100F is the best daily camera ever. And it's not really based off the spec sheet, but more of a everyday practical use uh, in the real world. So uh, let's get to it. Number one, the size. It's really small, it's really compact, it's really light. And that's what you want to look for in a daily camera. Of course, there's a time and a reason to carry around a big camera. The small size is what really makes it dailyable. I bought this camera just before my daughter was born. I knew I wouldn't really take as many pictures if I, if I just had to rely on, you know, this thing. Even though this strap is very thin, it's the perfect width for this camera because it's so light. This is a Gordy's strap, custom made, and I'll leave a link in the description below. You do notice that you have a camera around your neck, but it's, it doesn't bother me at all. It's not like at the end of the day, it's like, oh, get this off of me. I just want it quick access, you know? I just want to be able to quickly take a shot. Funny enough, when I was measuring the length of what strap to order, uh, I was actually using a different camera. My dad's old uh, Canon, little Canonette here, and you can see it's, it's it actually really looks similar. But I was, I was using this camera to measure the strap length, but what I failed to uh, consider was, this is a film camera. There's no, there's no uh, LCD screen on the back, and so when I was measuring, I was just, measuring for this operation. Once I bought the camera, uh, I ordered the strap before the camera. You know, this is this is fine, but once you're trying to look at the screen, it's a little difficult. So it's, <laughs> that's one thing I forgot to consider. What I do now is I just use the viewfinder to look at the playback. Now, I think in terms of a daily camera, there are two main competitors to this camera. And one is obviously your smartphone camera. You know, this you always have on you. It's it's quick, it's easy. You just flip it out, hit the shortcut buttons, turn on the camera and you're good to go. Everything is automatic. And then the other one of course is the GR3, the Ricoh GR3. That camera is a lot smaller than this one. It's a lot sleeker and it has the same APS-C size sensor. So the image quality is great. I think it's a competitor, even though it looks different uh, than this camera. So that leads me to reason number two. Not only does it take good photos, it also looks great in photos. The GR is more of the incognito look. If that's what you want, go for it. We all live in a world now where unfortunately gear is more popular than uh, the things you actually create with it. So if you wanna take good photos and also double as a prop for your coffee pictures, this is the way to go. And to be honest, yeah, I think it does look cool. It has that retro look to it. 99% of the people think it's an old film camera. It looks pretty badass. Okay, so number three, film simulations. Because this is made by Fuji and, you know, they also used to... Do they still make it anymore? Uh, they, they made a bunch of film, remember, back in the day? This camera, and actually all Fuji cameras, they have all the film simulations built into the camera, so it's Instagram ready. Um, and then you can also fine tune some of the other aspects of the picture, like, you know, shadow, highlights, contrast, brightness, and all that. So you can potentially dial in your look in camera and all you have to do is transfer it to your phone and upload. And that just removes one more step in your workflow. And also this camera, it's really made for photos, but you can actually do videos in a pinch. I've been shooting a little bit more video with this camera, particularly in vertical mode for, you know, the Instagram stories. Sacrilege. And it actually works great for the short form, you know, the Instagram post or the stories. And because of the built-in film simulations, even your videos will have your look built into it. But yeah, film simulations, great feature of this camera. Bye. <laughs> Reason number four, autofocus. So as a daily camera, you're looking for something very simple, kind of like the philosophy behind the iPhone camera. It's all automatic. It just makes it very simple. And a lot of the algorithms make it so easy to use the, your, your iPhone camera. The way I set mine up is to be as close to automated as possible. And so first of all, that's why I have the short strap and it's right there. If I see a moment, I can just do this. Sometimes this is even quicker than my iPhone. You know, I might have to dig it out of my pocket, you know, and by the time I'm up here, you know, sometimes this is a lot, lot quicker. Yeah, back to the autofocus. I set it up so that it's, it's a giant box 
um, that I can shift kind of basically either center or left or right. And then as soon as it detects a face, um, it'll automatically catch the face, even though it's not in the box. And so that makes it very quick and easy. The face detect will override the focus box if it detects a face. And so that's just another feature that just makes it very quick. And the other thing that I like about this camera in terms of uh, focusing is, is this joystick. That's one of the features that I use the most is the joystick to shift the autofocus points all the way back to my Canon days. And for reason number five, why this is the best daily camera, the lens. This lens is a leaf shutter. So it's, you can hear it, it's very quiet. You won't find leaf shutters much in the modern digital era, but what I really like about it is I could take pictures incognito. It won't make the loud shutter noise where, you know, all of a sudden it ruins the moment. And of course, because of the leaf shutter, you can also flash sync at any speed if you use a flash. I don't really use it much with flash, uh, particularly as a daily camera, but it's there if you need to. The other thing about the lens that's great about it is it's a 23 millimeter, but it's a 35 equivalent to a full frame. It's good for everyday use. If you need a little bit more wider, uh, what I do is I tend to just take multiple shots and stitch it together in post. Uh, for me, I like wider. I like seeing environment. I'm not so caught up in the bokeh. When I first started shooting, you know, I loved the bokeh. I loved shooting at 1.4, just blurring out the background. But, you know, as I'm, as I'm kind of growing through my own journey, I'm starting to like less of, especially that super telephoto, you know, where you see the person and the background is just nothing but color patterns. I think it's a little bit more challenging to take environmental portraits where you see a lot more of the background rather than just, you know, taking the easy way out of slapping on an albeit very expensive lens. Um, and just blurring out the background. So that's kind of going off on a tangent, but it does have an F2 aperture, this lens. So I think the sweet spot for shooting at F2 is about five to 10 feet. If you go a little bit closer, if you go super close um, and you just kind of get more of the head, F2 will get soft, particularly in the corners of, of the frame. But when you're closer, you're, that depth of field is already getting smaller and smaller. So I always find it annoying, particularly in like food photography where you shoot wide open and then you just see the sliver of focus. But like really, I wanna see the whole plate in focus. And so really, if you're gonna, here's a quick tip. If you're gonna shoot super close up, if you're gonna shoot super macro, just stop down to like F4. You know, nobody really cares about the razor thin depth of field. Even F4, you're, you're gonna get your blurry background tone. But anyway, the, I think the magical range of shooting wide open at F2 on this camera is about five to 10 feet. You get that perfect balance of slightly out of focus background. Yeah, and then the other thing is uh, it has a built-in ND filter and that helps you shoot wide open at F2 in bright sunny skies. I don't really know any cameras that have that feature other than video cameras. What I do is um, I just assign it to the custom function button because that's one of the features where if you need it, you don't want to dig through the menu system, you know, that you just need it right away and it's set to go. So yeah, the main reasons why this is the best daily camera ever is because it has the perfect combination. It takes great photos. It looks cool while doing it. It's super light and small and compact. I mean, really, that's all you need. It has that perfect blend. Go buy it already.